Guys, welcome to episode 37 of Get the Facts with Fallen, taking you back to South America. Uh, a very, very fun country as well. As I say, always, each time we go back to South America, the best content on the planet. So today, we're going to take you to Bolivia. Um, backpacker scene is huge, uh, but I would say it's not one of those destinations that, that people will fly to you just for a one-off trip, but... I'm going to convince you after this episode that it is a country that is absolutely worth your time. Works. Good morning, Mom. Glad to see you're watching. Weird. Keeps waiting for her. Okay, let's see if I can add her. Yes, success. Success, yes, give me five. Yeah, way to go, that's persistence. All right, introduce yourself. Say where you are, even though that's gonna throw them off. Say where you're originally from. Go for it, let's get this started. So, um, hello everyone, my name is Andrea Aquise. I am from La Paz, Bolivia. Which is an awesome, awesome, awesome country. So guys, we actually met on my first trip through Bolivia. We, uh, we met in La Paz, she convinced me that it was worth my time hiking Juana Potosi, and very small world story, we both had quite the, the Rio connection. She also went to the 2016 Rio Olympics. You were supporting your friend who, I think she was a marathon runner for yeah, Bolivia. Yeah, correct? exactly. Yeah, and so you yes, gave yes, yes. one of the Olympic pins from Bolivia, so friends ever since it was uh, it was very cool exchanging olympic stories and uh, it was a huge deal for her friend to, to qualify for the olympics um so yeah because even though we didn't meet personally in rio we we both had amazing experience and that changed everything and opened our mind yeah and then you've been you've been traveling we supposed to be in tokyo yes i know we will uh, fingers crossed it happens next year i uh, i've been counting down the days it sucks that they postponed it but that's okay. It, it'll still happen eventually. Is your is your friend yeah. still running? Like, is she going to try to qualify for Tokyo? Yeah, yeah, she's she's still running. Awesome. And of course, now there's also more good athletes, elite athletes in Bolivia. So, I think she'll do it again. Yeah, I hope so. That would be amazing. Heck yeah! And I'll be there on the the sidelines, totally representing, helping her uh, get to that finish line quicker. So let's dive in. What's, what's, I know you're currently in Brazil, but what are you hearing from your friends and family back home in Bolivia? How is COVID-19, you know, affecting life there? Well, um, for the starters, they cannot go out. Just they can go once per week, just for shopping, just till midday. Police and militars are all the time around checking asking for IDs, everything is controlled. So that in that aspect, things are doing good. Mm -hmm. And of course, we people is trying to be conscious about this and just going for shopping, but let's see how it goes because I've seen numbers, I've read uh, statistics, like Bolivia is not prepared. Yeah. Not in the medical system, not economically, not politically, not everything for, for increasing numbers of yeah, well, Corona. Hopefully this, this shutdown works where you guys don't run into a problem like Italy or Spain or even the United States is running into. Um, so fingers crossed they get it on. What, what's, like, what are the grocery stores like? Are, are, are there certain foods in Bolivia that are, that are running out? Are they, have they been pretty well stocked? Mm, they are pretty well stocked. The thing That's is it's more expensive. Oh, they're Especially meat. More expensive. Uh, interesting. So prices have gone up. Wow. Yes. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, even there's even it's a bit difficult to find like fresh good bread. Yeah. So yeah, I was just hearing the story of my dad going for withdrawing out money. Uh -huh. He had to walk very fast, two hours and a half to the city because we live far away. Yeah. And then going back home almost jogging because it was already noon and he was just like 15 minutes away from home. So you just. <laughs> oh my gosh! Well, you don't want to get caught. What the, you said the fines are quite hot. How much? How much are the police, if you get caught? So the fine is 
2,000 Bolivianos. 2,000 Bolivianos equals around 300 US dollars, which is the minimum Bolivian salary. Yeah. So it seems a lot. For a month, right? That, for some Bolivians, that's, that's a month salary. Ah, for, for many Bolivians. Yeah. Maybe so 30%. That, that is a very, very huge fine. Not worth, not worth risking that. That's just, that's absolutely insane. Well, let's dive into the fun stuff. All right. Traveling in Bolivia, is, it was amazing. I, I, I got to say, I didn't know much about Bolivia when I first visited, but it blew my mind. That country has so much to offer and totally lived up to, I mean, like I said, exceeded my expectations. So Andrea, in, in your opinion, what three spots are a must-see when someone comes to Bolivia? Well, let's start with my favorite, which is Huayna Potosí. Yes. One of the most popular, most accessible mountains, 6,000 meter, 6, meter mountain. Six thousand eighty-eight so, meters. Let's not cut off those eighty-eight. All right, those those extra eighty-eight. You feel them at the end. My bad. My <laughs> bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Six thousand eighty-eight meters above sea level. Yeah. And it's something you can do either in two or three days. The views are breathtaking, yeah. and it's worth it. There's people that has experience, and also people that have never um, wore this kind of gear or had this experience of on high altitude. Still. They can manage. Yeah. How many, the number how many times? How many times have you climbed it? <laughs> Six, seven, seven times. That's so crazy. Yeah, that's very, very impressive, guys. We talked about I'm this. I'm kind of in love with that we, mountain. Oh, it's there's nothing. So to put in perspective, Hawana Potosi is higher than Everest Base Camp. It's higher than Kilimanjaro. So it's one of the the yes. highest spots that you can climb. And the best part is the price. So for Kilimanjaro, you're going to be spending a few thousand, right? For Everest Base Camp, again, a few thousand U.S. dollars. When I was in Bolivia, it cost 148 U.S. dollars for a three-day trek to climb higher than all those places. So when I met other travelers, oh, I've been to Everest Base Camp. Oh, I've been to, to uh, Kili. It's just amazing. But it's just like I spent way less than you, and I climbed higher. But guys, this isn't just a, it's not a walk in the park. I mean, this elevation, when you get up to 6,088 meters, that's just under 20,000 feet. And um, I mean, your breathing, the breathing is very different. Uh, but there were, there were two moments on no. the climb when I realized like, oh my gosh, like this is insane. At one point there was like, a, I think it was a 10 meter, like a 30 foot wall more or less that you have to climb up, like truly yeah. climb up. You have crampons, you have an ice pick. And yes, you have like a guide tied to you. Yes, but and your fingers and those are, are oh, cold. Insane. And like you're smashing your feet with the, the crampons into the wall to get up this wall. So you get there. Then I think the, the even crazier is when you get to the summit, when you get to the peak, there's kind of a lower peak and then the true peak. And so you're walking across and uh, like it, it's just as wide as your shoulders. It's a tiny little walkway. And you look to your right and it's a few thousand feet drop. You look to your left again a few thousand feet drop and you're like yes because you're also climbing by night so yes. you cannot see much right right and, so, and you arrive more or less sunrise and you're like Whoa. it's insane and if if you if all i can think about is like if some of this ice breaks if i slip all i did was pay 150 dollars. you know you're tied to your guy that's just like why would he fall with me he just cut that rope and let me let you fall luckily we didn't run into that but uh no it's it's truly amazing i mean it's it's an adventure of a lifetime. Like I said in the other episode, it's the most fun. Some of us never want to have again. Clearly, others like to climb seven times, but the uh, the views are insane. So kudos for you to climb a seven. I mean, it's, it, it, it is not easy, but do it. Absolutely. If you want to challenge yourself, yeah. want to is the, the place to do it. So what's, what's number two on your list? I would go for uh, <clears throat> Death Road. Biking Death Road. Uh, Biking through the death road, which is, of course, called like this because it was many years ago, a road, dirt road, just for trucks connecting the jungle and Coroico where all a lot of fruits, yeah. coca leaves, and other foods come to the city. So it was the only road. Rainy season, it was going to be like, fluted? How do you say fluted? Rainy, uh, yeah, rainy season, and yeah. the dirt goes like, Oh, like mud. Oh, I like wash away. Like uh, not floods. But. Apologies, English is not my first language. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, rainy season. Oh, there'll be like washouts. Basically, the the landscape. Yeah, that. Exactly. 
Yeah. So trucks would have accidents in some curbs and they would fall. And so many, many persons died. That's true. Yeah. Now there's a new road, asphalt, super secure, where all the transportation goes. And the old road, dirt road, is still um, available for local buses and the bikers that yeah. want to experience this. So you start at more or less 4,900 meters. Yeah. It's very cold. You can Freezing. see some mountains, ice, lagoons. You start going 40 minutes, just asphalt, normal, easy. And then it starts three more hours, more or less, going downhill. Yeah. You can see, you can almost get to, you're very close to the jungle because you start at almost 5,000 meters and you end up at 1,200 meters. Yeah, yeah. In three hours. And you feel, you feel that temperature change. When we started, it was, it was snowing, it was hailing, it was absolutely freezing. I mean, like most of us, yeah, of our whole bodies literally were, were shaking from, from shivering. And we're like, why, why are we putting ourselves through this? But then you get lower, you realize it's not as bad. So you start on the paved road, that's your warm up, and you fly. I mean, like, make sure your brakes work because you go super fast. But then, you know, you finish the paved spot, you finish your warm up, they drive you to the, the actual death road, the, the massive cliffs where, where people, you know, trucks have fallen off. And it's fun. Pay for the full suspension. I did not. Not worth the, the you know, yeah, take really. four or five dollars. Pay for the full suspension. Yes, because it is a very bumpy road, but beautiful views. Guys, it's fun. There's waterfalls coming down the, you know, side of the road. It's, it's a heck of an adventure. And uh, it's, it's cool that they open it up for mountain bikers and, and, you know, adventure lovers, because that is one when you get to La Paz, do Death Road, climb Juanapotosi, and you can do it all in four days, maybe five days. I mean, luckily, it's all quite close together. So you can really, really knock out a lot of it. All right. Yep. What's number three on your list? Salt Flat. Yes. Salarda Uni. Oh, Uni. The dessert. The white dessert. Yeah. You can do it like travelers. No excuses. Travelers with little time can do it one day. Travelers with more time, they can do it two, three, four days. Yeah. And you are amazed. The first day and the third day usually is the best. And yeah. it's all great. It's beautiful. It's also one of uh, Bolivia's biggest resources, lithium. Mm -hmm. uh, I, was, I just saw that in a magazine today, actually. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the pictures you can take, rainy season has its amazing views. Dry season has another amazing views. And you can just check on the internet. Um, how, what's it? Perspective? Mm -hmm. Perspective pictures? Perspective, uni, salt flat, and boom. There's That's a lot of pictures. Mind-blowing. I mean, there's, there's so many. All these travel Instagram accounts or even Facebook groups, I guarantee you've seen at least one photo or one video from Salarda Uni. So depending on what season you go, we, we mentioned this yesterday on our episode in Chile. Uh, the, if it's rainy season, there's just a bit of water where it's a perfect mirror. It perfectly reflects the sky. So you can't really tell where the sky ends. And, you know, it, yes. it's beautiful. But even if you go Ooh. during the dry season, it's salt. It's just pure white. Pure white as far as you can see. Uh, again, a must do, crazy, crazy, crazy spot to see. Um, it, it's it's out of this world. And then, you know, it's it, the rest of your tour, if you do the three day tour, four day tour, they continue, you go to- um, uh, The National Park. Yeah, the National Park. Oh yeah, the Red Lake where there's flamingos. That's right, yes, which are very beautiful. You get kind of to the Red Desert. So do the three, you know, three, four days, however long you can. At one night you'll stay in a salt hotel. I mean, truly a hotel made of bricks of salt which is pretty neat. One thing that really it's blew very cold. was you're driving through the salt flats and there's an, a famous island. It's called, I think it's called like Cactus Island. And so there's nothing, was the island. That's yeah. amazing. Yes, there's nothing, nothing, nothing. And then boom, here's this crazy rock formation with these Full massive cactus. cactus. Yeah. And so it's, it's one of those tours you'll never forget doing and uh, a must. I, I was put to the chest on, on my tour. I specifically asked if there would be English speakers. So you'd have to pay more for an English guide. And I was like, ah, put myself to the test. Let's get a Spanish speaking guide, no problem. Well, I asked if there were gonna be people on the tour who spoke English and they promised, yeah, yeah, no problem, no problem. I show up the next day, it's me and six Argentinians uh, who do not speak English. So for three days, I was put to the test, had to really practice my Spanish. And uh, I feel for the, it really made me appreciate and feel for those people who are put in a country where they don't speak the local language because after a day and a half of this three-day tour, uh, I was just sitting quiet, which 
for those of you who know me, that's very strange. That never happens. And, and my friends from Argentina were like, what, what's wrong, Brent? What's, what, is there something wrong with you? And I go, no, I've literally said every word that I know in Spanish. I've run out of words. Like there was no other ways for me to get to know them, for me to express myself. So it's like, well, I guess I'll just sit here in silence and take in the views. So uh, total side note, but guys, get to Salarda Uni. I love it. Great example. I think a fourth um, a runner-up would be Lake Titicaca. That's always a, a very, very famous spot to go to. You can also go to the, the Amazon in Bolivia, right? Don't you have, you have to fly up? Yeah, yeah. So either you can fly one hour for a hundred dollars, or take a bus for ten dollars, but it's like sixteen hours. Yeah, yeah. So those are your choices. If you want to adventure, know. take take the bus. It's gonna take a long time, but. Bolivia truly has, has a lot. There's even wine country in the eastern part of the country. So Bolivia has a yeah. yeah, yeah. So let's let's dive into food. What are some of the, the most famous dishes from Bolivia, the must-tries? Well, we really don't like a lot of salads. We do like a lot of carbs, mm -hmm. especially if it's about potatoes. We even have, oops, I think in the connection. Uh oh, dang! It was going so well. Yes, you're back. Perfect. Woo. I, um, parentheses. Yes. I am in a beach. Yes. Just reachable by boat. The connection is not good. It's, you go, I tell you what, it's going very well. So let's hope it. Let's hope it stays this way. Oh dang it! We just jinxed it. We jinxed it. We should. I didn't say anything about it because it was going so well. Let's see. I might have to call her back. Hello. Oh, Brent, are you here? You're back. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Perfect. I can hear you. All right. Let's dive into food. You were saying about potatoes. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, no. The connection. Okay. Hey, I'm, there I'll you are. Call. Is it working? Maybe? I think so. Okay. I might have to, let me re-add you to the call. That sometimes fixes this, all right? Brent? I think, I think it's quite delayed. One second, let's see. Damn, it was working so well for you guys. At least we got the travel stuff in. Let's try to bring her back. Fingers crossed. Sophie, I did, I actually studied Spanish for three years and um, it was fun to put it to the test. I wouldn't say, I'm fluent, but I have enough Spanish to be conversational, at least for, I would say it's now probably two days, not just a, uh, a day and a half. Let's see, trying to connect. Let's see if she'll get back in. Dang, the Wi-Fi was working so well. We got the important stuff down. The travel spots in Bolivia. I want to make sure you guys heard about that because they're, uh, that, oh, seen photo. This at all. All right, I think she's requested. Let's try this again. Keep those fingers crossed, Sandy. Wherever she was sitting was working literally perfect for the first 15 minutes of this call. Come on. So guys, you're just tuning in. We are currently in kind of Bolivia. She's actually on the beach in Brazil talking about her home country, Bolivia. Not a bad spot uh, to be stuck in quarantine in, a, a beach in Brazil that she could only reach via boat. But um, it says connecting. Yes, we're back. Look at that, Sandy, it works. All right, so let's dive into food. <laughs> what type of food? You mentioned potatoes. Yeah, we just love potatoes. We have a couple thousand types of potato. So everything we eat has potato. Yes. And yes. if we have a lot of potatoes, we dehydrate them into white or black potatoes. Ah, that that's... basically look like rocks. Yeah. White and you see them and they look like rocks, but they are not. So they can last almost forever, let's say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. You how many it, literally thousands of species of potatoes. If you're a potato Yeah, lover, yeah. Go to Bolivia. Lots of mm. lots of lots of potatoes to choose from. Yeah. Well, are there, are there any any other dishes? Potatoes a big thing. Is there one specific so, dish 
that people need to try in Bolivia? Mm. The thing is, I love uh, pork meat. So uh -huh. the dishes I'm thinking about are the, the popular ones, but with pork. Yeah. Some called chicharron. Chicharron is basically, um, oh no, I'm losing you again. Are you here? Tell I'm me. here, I'm Talk here. I can hear you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you're good, you're good. Um, so pork, um, pork ribs cut in small pieces mm -hmm. and you spice it just with lime, just lime and salt, just nice. like that. As simple as that, you fry it, not deep fry, just fry it. And yep. it comes with uh, corn, the hatred corn that, of course, you boil, and one type of potatoes. And that's like with yahua. Also, Bolivians like a lot of spicy food. And yep. they have a spicy sauce called yahua, which is basically one type of chili. Could be habanero or something like that. Yeah. Uh, Kirquinha, a herb that's just in this area, well, this area, Bolivia area. Uh, tomato bit of salt and uh, oil and blender and that's oh, good what the so what are the, what are the names of the women that wear the hats it's um it's the hats and the big cholitas, cholitas. our so traditional woman they have they, the, i've met some cholitas so they would make that dish they would have a massive pot street side right and you get the pork you get the potato you get the corn and it, it's a it's a street food because i had it right outside of the uh la paz prison it was waiting on the, the walking tour of the city, and it was so nice. Oh, Very oh you know that? You did not tell me that. Yes. It was one of my favorite places to eat. I yes, miss it so I'm... much. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> and, like, there was a massive line of people. I knew with the amount of people going to this, this woman, I had to try it. It was perfect. Hit the spot. You Great. went to the place. Yes, the spot. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> That's amazing. I hit the, the spot. That's perfect. What about, are there... Are there any weird foods, anything strange that uh, people might consider odd that aren't from Bolivia? Well, as you experience in Peru, uh, they eat cuy. Cuy is... Yeah. Um... Guinea pig? Yeah, that... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, I personally don't like it because for me, it was pets, but... Mm -hmm. People loves it in stews mostly. Yeah, that yeah. would I think people finds it weird and they are excited to try it to have it's the experience. Different. It's very greasy meat. It's uh, there's not much meat and it's gonna be four bites and it, it's it's similar to um, dark meat on turkey. So if you ever had the dark meat of turkey, kind of slimy, greasy, uh, that's what that's the way to compare it. But guys, we're trying. It's uh, it is quite expensive. Uh, for for the amount of food you get, I would prefer the pork with potatoes. That that's much better. Um, but worth worth trying when you get to uh, Bolivia. What about what about stereotypes? What stereotypes about Bolivia are true? What stereotypes are are false? Um, well, truth is, I I realized this just like two months ago. We yeah. are the second country, the second shortest country no, shortest in like people in the shortest yeah. 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 yeah 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 the first is i think thailand or philippines oh interesting because men many bolivia uh their height is the average height for a guy uh -huh. is between um it's it's uh, uh, 1.66 165 centimeters 1.65 yeah. And women is, I don't know how much is that in inches or feet. And women is like 1.55 for women. So we are very small. Me not, thanks to my dad. I'm like 170, but yeah. Yeah. most Bolivians are small. It, so it's 5'4". So that's quite small. So if you go to Bolivia, I, I do remember, and I, I wonder if part of it is because most of the country is at elevation. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's interesting. We real quick question back to food. Sophie just asked the Native Americans in Paraguay also eat armadillo. Do people eat armadillo in Bolivia? No, not anymore. Actually, before they were making out of armadillos, they uh -huh. were making a musical instrument that's called charango. That's like a small guitar. No, <laughs> from armadillos. Yeah, yeah. Till they were in. <laughs> 
in danger of extinction, so they they stopped all of these. Ah, interesting. Also, uh, it's a very beautiful. Of course, now they can make it out of wood, but they yeah. were making it out of armadillos before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, interesting. Great question, Sophie. All right, back to the height. So, second smallest height-wise country in the world. That is true. That's just a fact. Anything else? Is is your I don't know if you want to get political here. Is your president as crazy as the media makes him seem? Is he still is he still president? No. He's not. He's, not. he's done. Oh my gosh, no way. That's when did he get out of office? Cuz he was so I believe October, sorry, October or November. Yeah. Last year was elections and he kind of lost, but there was um a dramatic scene there because there was maybe playing with the numbers because he got it up. It's weird stuff. Yeah. The thing is, he went out. Wow, that's and huge for Bolivia because that guy, that guy, guys, if you want to... Was running... Your, yes, and he was even able... The Constitution, the wording... Like, didn't he rewrite the Constitution so he was able to run again? Or no, no, no. He changed, yeah, the, name, he changed the name of the country... So then they had to rewrite the constitution, which allowed him to get another turn. Like this guy was so good at keeping the power. I cannot believe he, he lost. That's wild. That is crazy. I would just say, talking about politics, I would just say I like him very much. I really like him. Of course, yeah. I don't think I would have voted for him again. Yeah. Because he was going to be four term and staying long time in power. I don't think it's very healthy, but yeah. I like him. Not good. Okay. Good. Yeah, that guy. Wow. I just, I can't believe he's out. I thought he was going to be president until the, the day he left this earth. Fascinating. Very, very. Wow. That should have been the fun fact. Um, so, all right. Any other, any other stereotypes in your mind that are true or false about Bolivia? Stereotypes. Mm. Mm. Well, I don't think it's a stereotype, but it's a cultural thing uh -huh. between Bolivians and Paraguayans. We don't travel much. Mm -hmm. I bet the, like your friends that are watching right now, you never met a Bolivian traveling. Mm -mm. You're the one, but we, you're the one that I know that travels. You're the traveler from Bolivia that I know. Yeah, but, that's true. But you didn't meet me while travel traveling. You you met me in Bolivia. Very true. Very very true. Yeah. We are not used to that. People is like, mm, let's say, um, low class. Uh -huh. Go for them traveling is go going very early on Saturday to Lake Titicaca, Titicaca Lake, mm -hmm. Lake Titicaca, uh, spending the day and coming back in the afternoon. Yeah. Wow. Mm, doing those things. Uh, and even the rich people. The rich people will do Punta Cana. They will do a cruise. They will do Miami. Yeah. So there's not a culture of traveling and exploring and backpacking. There's not. Actually, right. the first time I went uh, out of my country for a long time myself, it was mm -hmm. real, 2015. And family, friends were afraid. And they were trying to um, convince me not to go. It's like, you're a girl. You're by yourself. Wow. It's another country. It's right. real. Like police and and robbery and this and that, you're right, not right. going to be safe, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's like this. And... I'm glad. I'm glad you broke the stigma. I'm glad you decided to go out and see the world and and went you know against the grain because no, it's good because people need to learn about your country. Bolivia is an amazing spot, right? And if they don't meet someone from that country then it's just another place on a map and so like luckily there are it is a big backpacker scene so a lot of people meet bolivians by going through the country uh but i'm, yeah. I'm you're a, i'm glad you're a trendsetter i'm glad you're getting out there and um seeing yeah the and i wish bolivians would just go 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 come explore yeah it's yeah good. fingers crossed you, you are the you're blazing the trail for for more bolivians to to get out and, and see more so Let's dive in. Okay. What, what is your absolute favorite thing about Bolivia? Hi. Uh, well, now I'm with saudade. Saudade is a Portuguese word for, that means not missing. It's like nostalgic and missing and happiness because yeah. I've been out of, this is the first time that I'm out of my country for 
almost a year. Yeah. And I didn't plan or expect this, but it happened. Right, right. So what I miss right now is the people. The people is warm. The people cares about you. The people is not thinking like just in, in making money out of you and taking some, something from you. No, the people, uh, especially the, 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 the most like, simple people would, mm-hmm. will open the doors of house of a friendship for you, yeah. not expecting anything in return. People yeah. is good. No, I, and, I, and the sites. I would think the sites. Yeah. In La Paz, yeah. a city that's 3,600 meters above sea level, you can find spots just to sit, have a yeah. drink, yeah. and enjoy the beer. Well, and someone commented a, a few minutes ago, the Teleferico that you can ride, you get above the city. Mm-hmm. Another, and guys, the views in La Paz, with it being at such elevation, all the houses, you know, the villages are built along the, you know, the elevation uh, up the mountain. And so it's yes. very, very, it's in a valley, but as you get higher, it's just, it's, it's such a beautiful place to see. It's a very, you have city. one, two, three, four, maybe seven, maybe seven lines of the cable car now, Teleferico, yeah. which connect the city all around because La Paz is built like this. We don't yeah. have a chance for metros or that kind of transportation system so the easiest thing and clever thing was to the cities here to do um surrounding of telephericos at first the people was thinking it was for tourists but it's not uh-uh. it's for yeah of course they can enjoy it as well but it's for people the population to for citizens to get a lot to get um to move easier around the city yeah people that had before to travel one hour and 20 minutes to go to work from one point to another. Now they can do it in 15, 20 minutes. And it's also cheap. Yeah. yeah. I believe it's an Austrian company that made it possible and the government of Evo Morales. <laughs> but uh, you pay per ride three Bolivianos. Three Bolivianos is less than 50 cents of dollar, American dollar. It's so cheap. And, and like, it, it's well worth your money. It's one of the cheapest attractions. I mean, guys, if, what's very, for you travelers watching, Bolivia is probably one of the cheapest countries to travel to in South America. I, I always sure. consider it, like price-wise, I always tell people it's the Asia of South America. It's just incredibly cheap, which, uh, which works out nicely for you on a budget back, you know, you budget backpackers. You can really do a lot and stay within budget. And um, yeah, I mean, the, the Teleferico, yeah. perfect way to spend a day. It, ride it all the way up, take in the views, explore up top. There's, uh, you know, multiple restaurants to pick from, a lot of different spots to explore. Um, as always, be smart, be street smart, right? Don't be an idiot. Um, don't get yourself into trouble. But, yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those things. La Paz is, is another beautiful, beautiful city that should not be missed. Uh, and, and Bolivia in general is another country that should not be missed when you go to South America because there is truly so much to do. So what's – I got one more question for you. What's one fact about Bolivia no, – Give me more questions. Give me more questions. Give yeah, what, questions. Would, what would surprise people? One fact about Bolivia that would, would shock people? Uh, in which area or – Just what's one fact in general about Bolivia that, that's surprising that not many people would know? Mm. Well, at least in Brazil – we are next to Brazil, right. but when I tell them I'm 28 years old today, no, no, not today, like, <laughs> I'm 20 years old. <laughs> this moment right now, I'm 20. 28, yes. <laughs> right now, I'm 28. What's happening? I, it was 2016 that I first saw the sea in my life, wow. the beach. So, because Bolivia is landlocked, exactly. we don't have access to the sea. You guys, so people, way, way back, you guys had a, a port, but there was a massive war, right, between Peru and Chile, where unfortunately you guys yeah. lost land. But yes, yeah, so Bolivia, now, yeah, we lost. Yeah, yeah. But now landlocked. Sorry, sorry to bring up the bad history, but just so people know a little bit about the history, nah, I think. Bolivia is, is landlocked. What was that? What yeah, was if that we want. Find it, seeing what? The, what was it like seeing the, the ocean for the first time? How was it? It was amazing. I was actually, it was Copacabana Beach. Oh, I just arrived. 
Oh, my back was like. Beach. Wow. The waves, the wind, the sand. And even I remember the first time I was with uh, friends, single travelers, just gathered together and went to a beach in, in Bucios. Yeah. Uh, it's in the state of Rio, just two hours away or three hours away. Uh -huh. And the girl started playing in the waves, like just jumping. And I didn't know what was that. I never experienced that. And I'm like, let's try it. And I was going, I was like, one, two, three, and then you jump. Okay, okay, let's jump. And I was so happy, like, yes, and yes. And one of the girls tells me, Andrea, for your face, I would tell it was the first time you were ha you were having this experience. I was like, it is my first experience. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of Bolivians don't have the chance or they think as well. At first I thought, uh, since I was a kid, like, uh, traveling is expensive, even Peru is expensive, but it's not yeah. true. There's nowadays, there's ways to travel. Um, there's couch surfing, there's pages and apps for uh, volunteering in other countries, in areas that even you like, with, with, where you can um, share your abilities, etc. So there's cheap ways. Everyone can travel, no excuse. Amen. So, yeah. No, I totally agree. Yeah. I totally agree. Like, guys, make it happen. If traveling is one of those things that you've always dreamed about, do it. Uh, I, I, I have people contact me through Instagram all the time saying, hey, what is it like, you know, taking that leap of faith, is it worth it? There was a guy that I've been messaging, his name's Brett, he's from the United Brett. States, and um, he, was on, he was thinking about going on a journey around the world, and I was like, listen, man, in 50 years from now, what are you going to regret more? Actually going on the trip and, you know, traveling for five, six, maybe even 12 months, or having that thought of, man, I really wonder what it would have been like. And he did it, and he's loved it. He's still traveling. I mean, he's still going, which is even better. So go for it, because I promise you, one of the best things that will ever happen in your life is taking that leap of faith, because you meet incredible people like her and all these other people that you've seen in this series that truly change your life. Your mind will never be the same. It's opened to so many cultures, so many new things. Every, everyone's like, well, how are you not tired after traveling four years? It's because of the people, and it's because of the adventures, the daily adventures. It's because of the people and the story, something that I learned from you as well. Exactly. It's just nonstop. All right. I have one fact about La Paz specifically. Well, I guess Bolivia as well. That's very, very, very interesting. And so maybe it's changed, but when I was there, so in Bolivia, you're guilty until proven innocent. Okay? So if something, uh... you are guilty. You're thrown in prison. So don't be an idiot when you go. But where it gets interesting is the prison in La Paz. It is one of the craziest prisons in the world. There are books about it. And it's because it's basically another city within a city. Um, so there's, I think the book's called Marching Powder. There was an Australian, that, right? That, that will give you more insight on this prison. But even just a couple of years before I was there, the um, um, Lonely Planet, had it listed as one of the best places to party, best places to eat, one of the must-see and do spots in La Paz. And I don't know if you remember this. You had a friend that was in there, and I tried to convince you to take me in. And I'm so glad we didn't because people do get stuck in that prison. Um, at one government, so, guys, no joke. Some of the best restaurants are there. So what happens in this prison, the families actually live with the, the person that, that, uh, that is in prison. And so you go in there, you have to pay rent, you pay for a cell. So there's a hierarchy on like, there's a corner for all the, the dirty politicians who have like a massive wing, they've got jacuzzis. I mean, it's, it's basically like mansions inside a prison, but then, you know, there's other sections and then there's restaurants and it's truly a functioning society in this prison. And so in the mornings, the, the wives and the kids are able to leave. And then at night they go back and so that's shocking to me that up until a few years ago that, um, I mean, the, the rumor that I heard was the, the police were or somewhat like the news was doing a story on the prison. And in the background, there are a ton of gringos walking in and out, right, going to and from the prison. And then at that point, they're like, no more. We, we can't have tourists. We can't have a prison be our number one spot. Um, so that that was shocking to me that for tourism wise, the prison is, is was so popular it's worth reading into it it's worth i mean do the walk, the walk around it 
And so uh, what, what other fun fact, they, they would say, rumor has it, I, I'm not condoning drugs whatsoever. I've never done drugs in my life. But they've even said the purest cocaine in South America was made inside that prison. So if you ever saw baby diapers or oranges, anything thrown outside the prison, do not touch it. It's usually a drug drop. Don't know if that's true, but it's just, it, it is true. So just, it's, it's a crazy, crazy, it's a very shocking fact uh, that this prison exists in La Paz and uh, because- And also of, the prison is in the center of the city. Exactly, literally in the heart. And so with the rule being guilty until proven innocent, until your court date, you're thrown in. Um, so it's, 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 it's- truly Yeah, even if you're innocent, you can wait one, two years for, for being in front of a judge and- Yeah. So, okay, yeah, you're free, but so, you already lost. Sometimes. Yeah. So, so unless you want a super extended vacation in Bolivia, just don't be an idiot. That's the biggest thing. Like, don't even something go. Something I have to add here yeah. is that recently something that they changed. I think it's for good. I truly believe that is that now the kids are not allowed to be there, like families. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Because the kids, it was better for the kids at some yeah. point to be there. So even if they could go out for school and come back in the afternoon, yeah. it was not good. It was not healthy. So now the kids are not allowed and they can, they are helping them as well. Good. But they are not, kids are not allowed anymore. That is actually a very, very, very good change. Just, I mean, like, it's, it sucks that they're separated from their families. But, you know, if, if they're innocent, they'll get out. They'll be back with their family. I'm glad, I'm glad they changed that rule. Um, good to know. Because I figured it's been, it's been a few years since I've been to Bolivia um it was it was wild seeing that so yeah definitely a, a change for the good guys that's a shock hopefully a shocking fact that uh this the prison in general but again it's like bolivia is so amazing if you can't tell i freaking loved it it is the hidden gem of south america for sure with that address thank you so much for taking the time it's been way too long since we've had a face-to-face -face, you know talk so i'm glad you're doing well and uh, crushing it. I mean, not, you are in a wonderful place to be in quarantine or just waiting out this virus. So hopefully things get, get yeah, better. If it was daytime, because it's like, what, nine and something? Yeah. If it was yeah. daytime, you would see behind me the beach. It's, oh, you'll it's, have, you it's need to see it tomorrow. I need, to, I need to see it. Yeah. I'd love to see it. Okay, one more thing. What is your message to the world? What would you like to say everyone who watches this video? Whoa, I was not prepared for this. <laughs> <laughs> aye, aye, aye. I would say besides what we were talking before, we were talking about traveling, exploring, going a bit more outside. Maybe it's not traveling, but it's going a bit more out, out of your comfort zone. Yeah. It's true. And trusting more people. Yeah, as soon as you trust a bit more, people, people is there for you. I told you, I didn't expect this trouble. Like, I travel, it's almost, it's actually a bit more than one year that I'm out of Bolivia. Yeah. And I'm thankful for being here. Right now, yes, we're in quarantine. Yes, I'm not working. Uh, there's stuff going on. But I'm thankful for where am I right now. Yeah. And I'm lucky to be surrounded by great people, getting to meet amazing people like you, being in touch of uh, in touch with my family having the opportunity to, tra to travel a bit more exactly so let's do it a bit more and helping each other sharing stories like you like that's one of the things that i have in mind when i think of you sharing stories yeah. not just your stories but the stories of the people that you met that made a change in you and probably will change will make a good change in someone else exactly you know that's the that's the whole purpose of the series is to to sh i mean even if even if just two people, one person plus my mom watches these episodes, it's to show them that there are amazing people everywhere. Truly, truly everywhere. And uh, I love that, guys. Get out of your comfort zone. Go see the world. Even, even, even if it's not traveling outside the world, go to a new city. Go to a, the town over and start a conversation with a stranger. You will be shocked after, after social distancing's over. Let's just, just clarify real quick, after the virus. But you'll be amazed that uh, just taking that extra step, getting out of your comfort zone, will truly change your life forever. All right, we've got one more question. Someone asked, which capital is better, La Paz or Sucre? So for starters, capital, the capital is Sucre? Yeah. Which and side note, we have a, in my Spanish 
class growing up, okay, in seventh and eighth grade, we had a song where we would sing the capitals of every country in South America. And in that song, we would sing La Paz, Bolivia. And so when I got to Bolivia and I learned the capital was actually Sucre, I emailed my Spanish teacher from middle school to let her know that that song is wrong. It was wrong. <laughs> but side note, what, which one, in your opinion, which one is better? Ay, ay, ay. They're different. Ay, ay, ay. They are very different and amazing both. You have to go both to both. Yeah. Like if you're going to Bolivia, you have to take at least, like, at least two weeks for Bolivia. Please. If yeah. not three or four, at least two. There's people going... Uh, to Bolivia, through Bolivia, because it's like the backpacking way, like uh, Brazil, Argentina, Bolivia, Peru, the blah, 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 going up. And yeah. they sometimes underestimate Bolivia and they just spend there one week or three days and it breaks my heart. Yeah. Just spend at least two weeks. La Paz and Sucre are amazing. Sucre so, is very nice and you have a lot of things to do yeah. and you have to go there. And La Paz, of course, La Paz and Messi. So good. So good. I miss Sucre. But, oh, they're asking, is Sucre as sweet as it sounds? It it sounds is. like yes. <laughs> it is. Plus, they make such amazing chocolate. Like, I'll say, uh, my family was here. Dad, brother, sister, they came to visit me for New Year's. Uh -huh. They spent 10 days here with me. It was a wonderful time. I was so happy. And I was like, in my list of, please bring me this, please bring me that. They brought me my favorite chocolate, 70% uh -huh. um, dark chocolate. Heck yeah. Uh, from Bolivia, from Sucre. The table. Mm, Good to know. I still have some more. Yeah. yeah. Heck yeah. So, guys, with that, get to both cities. When you get to Bolivia, if you're backpacking long term, add a few days extra on your itinerary because you're going to need them. Do not underestimate Bolivia. Do not underestimate the things you can do there because you will be stunned and amazed and have the time of your life when you get there. Andrea, thank you so, so much for doing this episode. Uh, it's it's so good to share the the great country of Bolivia. I freaking loved it. Like if you, <laughs> guys, if you can't tell, I literally loved it so much. And I know I say that a lot, but Bolivia truly <laughs> blew my mind. So real quick, the next couple episodes uh, tonight in Singapore, tomorrow morning in the United States, in roughly twelve hours and six minutes to be exact, we're taking you back to the Middle East. We're gonna do an episode on Israel. Uh, so Israel, fascinating country. Again, lots of history there. Uh, so we'll dive into there. And then in 24 hours, we're mixing it up because we're cruising all these episodes. We're cruising a lot of countries with all the hype with Tiger King on Netflix. I found out that one of my friends actually worked for the Tiger King himself, Joe Exotic. She was a, a co-worker. She was one of the film crew for eight months. And so we're going to be going live with her and uh, telling what life was like with Joe Exotic and dive into uh, just – how crazy is the Netflix series as crazy as they make it. So with that, if you're watching, please stay at home. Please stay inside. Wash your hands. And together, let's get through this so we can all step out of our comfort zones very soon and make new friends and truly make this world a better place. So, Andrea, thank you so, so much. Enjoy Brazil. Stay safe. And uh, hopefully see you in Tokyo next year. Yeah, let's do okay. that. Thanks Sounds for good. sharing. Absolutely. Thanks for taking me into that. You take care. Be safe. Bye-bye. Thank you.